Hello, everyone, and welcome to the North Bay Business Journal's annual CFO awards presentation. We're so happy to have you here today. My name is Anthony Borders. I'm the editor and event content manager with the North Bay Business Journal. If you had to think about a tough position for the last 18 months in a company, the CEO, CFO would have to be right up there. These folks have been uh, enduring a lot of, all of us have been enduring a lot of, but these folks have for their companies had to manage the stress and the uncertainty of where the companies were going and how they were going to perform, plus do their normal duties of making sure the businesses remained on track and everyone was getting what they needed to run a business. So that's why it's an especially uh, gratifying event today to call and call witness to those who are the top of the CFO category. These are people who have done work in nonprofits, all kinds of different areas, and they really succeeded in bringing their companies forward to really excel in difficult times. First, we'd like to thank our founding underwriter for this event, Comerica, and uh, they've been a solid supporter of the CFO program for a long time. Now let's get to uh, the program. Let me introduce Arash Gassimi, who's the Relationship Manager, Middle Level Marketing for Comerica Bank. And he will introduce you to a very interesting keynote speaker. Arash? Hello. My name is Arash Gassimi of Comerica San Francisco Middle Market Group. It is my honor to introduce today's keynote speaker, Juan Sanchez. I've known Juan for over 11 years and witnessed firsthand his amazing journey from a Senior Vice President in Commercial Banking the president of a luxury tequila and mezcal producer on its way to becoming one of Mexico's icons of luxury. Juan possesses a personality that makes you happy and at ease. He believes deeply in his company's values and is consistently ensuring management's actions remain aligned with that. These actions are the reason Clase Azul Spirits has grown so explosively in the last 10 years. I'm proud to be his banker and extremely grateful to be his friend. Uh, thanks, Arash. Excited to be here virtually with the hope of meeting face to face soon. So this is a group of CFOs, bankers, and financial executives. Today, I wanted to discuss the recent FASB pronouncement, topic 842, regarding leases and lessors, certain leases with variable lease payments. As you guys know, FASB stands for Financial Accounting Standards Board. This is a topic that I find personally fascinating. That, of course, is a joke, although perhaps important to some of you. In all seriousness, we're in an age of disruption and constant innovation, and dealing with COVID and what continues to, to really matter are people. So today, I want to focus on people and our teams. Without them, nothing is possible. Despite our technical abilities, I personally believe from the bottom of my heart that finding and nurturing and scaling the right people is the biggest challenge businesses will face in the future. In my opinion, there are a couple of ways to help our people and grow our teams. Number one, having a clear purpose. For example, in our company, we exist to captivate the world through the magic of Mexican culture while transforming ourselves into better human beings. If your purpose is to maximize shareholder wealth, then say it and walk the talk. It's okay. For us, being profitable is one of our goals, not our purpose. Number two, as a leader, we have to be vulnerable. We are humans and we have real feelings. The word vulnerable comes from the Latin word wound. In this context, however, I mean open to constructive criticism, open to feedback, which is the only way we as individuals can grow. One example is to constantly ask for feedback. For me, face-to-face -face feedback works best versus an online survey or 360 reviews. So I'll just rather ask face-to-face -to, -face to my team members in a nice way. What can I do better? How can I do a, be a better leader for you? Number three, I believe there's no difference between personal and professional life. We all bring both to work and to home. There are many recent examples that we all have experienced over the past months. 
for those who had the luxury of being able to work from home, we actually got to know our coworkers on a more personal level as we were invited into their homes and saw and heard their kids, pets, significant others, and in some cases, much more. I also think that deepening relationships and moving away from corporate feelings is important such as when we as leaders are asked, how are you doing? The answer is usually a corporate feeling. Okay, good, great. As opposed to really answering that you are grateful because your 12 year old kid is back to in-person learning. Or you feel joyful because your mother's surgery went well. Or ecstatic because you just won the North Bay Business Journal CFO Award of the Year. As leaders, we have to ask caring questions as well and be ready to actually listen from the heart with consciousness. Don't interrupt, don't look at your screen, just listen. I worked at this constantly, not only at the office, but also at home. In closing, my focus continues to be what I just mentioned. And my inspiration comes from the book, The Four Agreements by Dr. Ruiz. The four agreements are don't assume, don't take it personally, make your best effort every day, and be impeccable with your words. Good luck to everyone. Be well. Cheers. Well, Juan, thank you very much. That was uh, quite an insightful talk and uh, some really good lessons there. I appreciate your offering those to us today. It sounds like a, a great story you and your company has to tell. If I could, I'd just like to ask a few questions of you about that uh, presentation about you. So it's an interesting journey to me where you started in corporate banking and uh, now find yourself uh, leading a successful uh, tequila company with these values as you just outlined. How did the journey uh, get you to this point? How did you develop those uh, core values while starting commercial banking? Oh, thank you. Um, it, it really took some time and it's, it's more of a journey, uh, which I believe we're still in this journey. Uh, myself and our founder, uh, Arturo uh, Lomeli. Um, it fundamentally, it started with, um, at, at least for me, uh, to try and help others. Um, and trying to help others, uh, what I mean by that, Specifically, um, I was lucky enough to come to the United States for, for university and then graduate school. I then go into corporate banking, which uh, taught me a lot, um, a lot about uh, what successful businesses do and uh, some other businesses that are not successful, what do they need to do? Um, but fundamentally, I wanted to help. And the way I, I felt it at the time or expressed it is I wanted to create jobs Specifically, I wanted to create also more jobs in Mexico for all the obvious reasons. So that was sort of the, the, the initial inspiration, but it's, it's, it's been a journey and it's constant. Uh, it's a constant introspection, a constant trying to, to get in touch with my feelings and get to know myself first better, uh, so then I can hopefully be a, a better leader. And you and I realize we're talking before an audience of CFOs, a lot of them. So talk me through uh, the, the question that comes to mind with that. And that's uh, when, you're, when your decision making is, uh, when you make decisions, how do you avoid not just looking at the bottom line, but look at a bigger picture than that? Especially when the bottom line is a lot of, a lot of what the business world tends to focus on. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's a couple of ways of doing it, or at least that we do it is um, when you're having uh, strategic meetings, um, which, by the way, um, I believe strategy comes or is the, is, it comes from uh, from the word uncertainty. Right? So that's kind of fundamentally what you're trying to do is minimize uncertainty uh, into certainty, which is very hard to do. Um, usually, one way to do it is don't start with with the PNL. Um, sort of do a brainstorming session as to uh, what you want and where you want to be and what's the vision of whoever's leading the discussion or whoever's leading the strategy discussion. Um, and then look at the p and in another separate meeting. Now that doesn't mean that you don't incorporate your finance leaders, they're there. Um, 
but don't focus on, on the dollars and cents. They're very, they're important, obviously, uh, but it's not the all. So I suggest a couple sessions where you maybe split um, the PNL discussion. And definitely for us, um, what we find very helpful is don't start strategic meetings with the PNL um, yeah. because that minimizes, uh, I believe, the creativity of everyone. I start more with a brain, brainstorming session with any any answer is okay. Uh, and that opens up the mind um, into positivity. So that, that's that's what we found in our company helps a lot. Terrific, terrific. One more question on a key principle and that's vulnerability. Uh, you know better than anyone else what kind of year and a half we've had with remote meetings and everything else that's uh, kind of separated us from others. Um, and you know an executive has a lot of demands on their time. So what are some key ways that you found yourself being able to stop and uh, be able to listen more carefully to when people really need to have a little bit more of your time? Yeah, I mean, that, that's a tough one. Um, especially with what's happened, you know, during the pandemic. Um, you know, I think for, for, for the folks like myself that, we're in the, that we have the luxury, because I, I call it a luxury, the luxury of actually working from home um, because we were better protected, as opposed to many of our um, team members. Um, we produce tequila and mezcal and ceramics too. Um, so we, if you're producing, obviously, in, in manufacturing, you, you can't do it at home, right? It's impossible. Um, so my heart goes out to um, all of those um, team members and folks that really um, never or didn't have the luxury of staying at home. Um, and I just want to kind of do a shout out to them uh, because they really kept the economy going, which is really important. Uh, for those of us, like myself, with the luxury of, of, of staying at home, or as I, I said, I, I was considered not essential, not essential, <clears throat> sorry, not, not essential. Um, um, listening, taking your time, shorter meetings, not 60 minute meetings, 45, minute meetings, uh, picking up the phone and calling someone. Not, not everything has to be through video, or I think we got used to, at least I got used to, everything being on video. Hey, a phone call is okay. How are you doing? Um, just asking those questions. It's tough. It's really tough, especially with, with all the uh, what, all that has happened. Um, the last 18 months has been a challenge, and it's hard. It's something that I work at every day, but it's not easy. Uh, meditation helps. Breathing helps. Um, so those are some of the things that I apply every day, uh, but I'm by no, no means, no means there yet. Terrific. Well, you shared your time with us and we appreciate that. Thank you, Juan, and thanks for the valuable lessons today. Thank you so much. Take care, everyone. Well, thank you, Juan and Arash, for bringing us some really key information about a very interesting business, sort of in the mode that we're in today, learning about businesses and how they're surviving these days. But now let's go on to the awards. The recipients of these awards were asked to submit a 40 second video answering one of these questions for us. What have I learned from this incredible time we are in or how has it changed me? What to do, what message do I have at this time for my friends and colleagues in the community? How will the pandemic change my life as I know it? That's a deep one. Was there a single experience in this incredible time that I want to share with you all? And what message do you have for your profession right now? All of those questions were offered as uh, questions to be answered on the videos and we'll show you those videos today and there'll be some very interesting answers throughout our awards presentation. And to start us off on that awards presentation, I'm pleased to introduce Michael A. Silva, Regional Vice President with Comerica. He and his colleagues will be have, highlighting the remarkable accomplishments of this year, year's CFO award winners. Hello, Mike. On behalf of Comerica Bank, we are pleased to once again sponsor the North Bay CFO of the Year Awards. This represents the fifth anniversary of Comerica in the title sponsor role. Comerica has been providing banking services to companies and nonprofits in the North Bay for over 30 years, and the market is very near and dear to our hearts. CFOs are often, are 
are very near and dear to our hearts as well. They're often the unsung heroes of the business world and a strong and capable CFO can really make all the difference in a company striving to achieve its strategic goals. First up for recognition today is Lievin Mwamba. Lievin's from the Center for Volunteer and Nonprofit Leadership. He's been a real leader this past year helping CVNL through the pandemic and significant merge, a significant merger. He is a finance and operations professional with 20 years of experience in accounting, human services, and operations management in nonprofit organizations. Originally from the Democratic Republic of Congo, he worked for 16 years within international nonprofit organizations. Early in his profession, he worked for four years with the Peace Corps of the United States as a trainer. Subsequently, he joined the International Committee of the Red Cross in DR Congo and worked as a finance and human resources manager. Because of his strong leadership and management skills in financial analysis and accounting, he was appointed director of finance at the national level. He managed and supervised budgets for nine field offices, trained staff accountants, and managed all daily operations. Before joining CVNL, Lievin worked as a finance accounting and HR manager at Upwardly Global, a US national nonprofit organization. At Upwardly Global, Lievin created a strong foundation for growth that improved financial systems to sustain rapid organizational growth. Lievin is described as a calm and composed leader with integrity, confidence, and a deep knowledge of both finance operations, HR, and programming. He's always available to provide guidance or assistance and excels at explaining complicated topics in easy to understand ways so that CVNL staff have better financial competencies. I have the pleasure of actually knowing Lievin as I serve as a treasurer on the board at CVNL and his, his acknowledgements are truly remarkable. Congratulations, Leon. Last year, one of my sons got married and due to the pandemic, we were not able to have the wedding that they wanted. Still, thanks to the pandemic, the wedding was cheaper. I have lost loved ones during the pandemic. I have since learned to always share my love for those close to me, as you never know which time will be the last. To take care of my mental health during the pandemic, I picked up cooking and gardening. My okra plants have begun sprouting. Lastly, I entreat fellows in my profession to keep moving forward during this crucial and unprecedented time. Hi, my name is Phil Koblis, Senior VP and Group Manager, North Bay Comerica Bank. And I'm here to present the next two award winners. Rick Edson, Santa Rosa City Schools. Rick has been employed by Santa Rosa City Schools since 2014. Prior to coming to the district, he was the Chief Technology Officer at San Mateo Foster City School District. When Rick took over, as the head of business services at Santa Rosa City Schools in 2017, a role he assumed along with his duties as chief technology and bond officer, a headline in the Press Democrat read, Santa Rosa Schools face 19 million shortfall over next two years. Since then, he has successfully led the school district's financial improvement, including creation of fiscal systems to reduce the district's structural deficit, his ability to step into the district's CFO role and to lead this collaborative process was greatly contributed to the reduction of the $19 million structural deficit. Rick has maximized resources to best serve the 16,000 students and 1,600 employees of Santa Rosa City Schools, and in turn, our local economy and community. Of particular note, during the increasing call of educators nationwide for fair compensation, he has been instrumental in bringing the school district's labor groups to a compensation level commiserate with the state's averages, which is unprecedented for the district. He centers his fiscal work on the best interests of our students and of our district's mission, vision, 
and strategic priorities. During the past seven years, Rick has also led the implementation of Measure I and L bond program that was passed by voters in 2014. Measures I and L serve to upgrade facilities, address overcrowding, and infuse classroom technology and associated access in order to better serve the students. Throughout the bond program, Rick has led the technology and facilities director as they completed multi-million dollar projects, provided leadership and transparency for the bonds citizens oversight committees, and directed refunding of previous bonds that have saved millions of taxpayers dollars. His ability to communicate in layman's terms, complex infrastructure information is both vital and commendable. Congratulations, Rick. This year we learned as an organization, and I learned personally that we need to be more creative and act with agility, especially with dealing with our employees. Our employees have always been important to us, but being able to help them with unknown obstacles uh, what became paramount as we went through the last 18 months. We as an organization had to make many moves based on individual needs of employees in order to ensure that education could still take place for the students of our community. Immerse yourself in the work. Learn about all parts of the organization. Doing so will help you make better financial decisions that contribute to your success. Camille Kazarian, Summit State Bank. As the Executive Vice President and Chief Financial Officer, Camille has been instrumental in enhancing and elevating the Treasury Management function, which included overhauling several policies and consolidating them into one comprehensive document. She also instituted a Management Asset Liability Committee compromised of the executive team which meets monthly to ensure the bank's assets and liabilities are managed to maximize shareholder value, enhance profitability, sustain adequate capital, serve customer and community needs, and protect the bank from any adverse financial consequences arising from changes in liquidity and interest rates. Her insight and recommendations have been supported by her management peers, as well as the board of directors. Due to her vision and perseverance, the bank is able to apply for and receive matching grants from the Federal Loan Bank of San Francisco, totaling 20,000 for the benefit of the following local nonprofits, Catholic Charities, the Redwood Empire Food Bank, and Corazon Hillsburg. Camille says a good CFO should be more than just a bean counter. An effective CFO is well-rounded understands all aspects of their business, thinks strategically, communicates well, and most importantly, plays well with others. The CFO job can have a lot of unpredictable moments that are extremely interesting and engaging. So when the opportunity arises to participate in a project or activity, she jumps right in, stating it is exciting to see where the road takes her. Congratulations, Camille. Hello, my name is Sean Moldowski and I'm a Relationship Manager with Comerica Bank. It's my honor to present the next award to Joe Prusco uh, at Nelson Associates. With more than 35 years of financial management experience, Joe has been an invaluable asset to Nelson Associates. His customer focus and provision of timely and useful financial information to stakeholders enhances management decisions and ultimately drives profitability. His experience includes tenure with both public and private companies and a focus on strategic planning, debt and equity issuances, and designing compensation and employee uh, benefit plans. During the M&A of Nelson's sister company, Iwer Global, Joe led the accounting and finance team with finesse and professionalism to make the process as smooth and successful as possible. He mentored his team throughout the entire process Joe continuously provided clear guidance and direction through the negotiation and the due diligence phases, and he continues to be very logical and thoughtful during the current transition phase. Joe takes time to listen to all issues actively and thoughtfully, uh, provides suggestions on how to best approach 
each unique situation and never misses an opportunity to recognize his team's efforts with the senior management team. When asked what perceptions Joe would change about the CFO job, it is the, that the job is boring and that CFOs have no personality. Uh, to the contrary, according to Joe, the CFO job is very exciting and is anything but boring. Uh, further, Joe insists that CFOs have great personalities and having worked with Joe for the last several years, I agree. Congratulations, Joe. Hello, everyone. My name is Joe Presco, and I'm the CFO at Nelson and Higher Growth Search. Those are both staffing firms. To begin with, I'd like to thank the North Bay Business Journal for this recognition. I also want to thank my team at Nelson for their dedication and support. And of course, I need to thank my wife and son for their continued love and support. Now, the one thing that I've learned over the last 18 months is that we can work effectively remotely. The solutions we've come up with, with the, the various challenges we've faced, have been very instrumental in getting us through this difficult time. Now, the one thing we'll see in the future that now that we've proven that we can work remotely is that more employees will want that option in their employment arrangements. Now, going forward with our profession, the challenge is going to be how do we stay connected with our uh, peers, our, our, our subject matter experts, and, uh, and our networks while we're working remotely. Again, I want to thank the North Bay Business Journal, and I wish you all the best for the remainder of the year. Thank you. Hi, I'm Hema Quinn, Senior Relationship Manager in Comerica's Wine Industry Specialty Group. I am pleased to have the opportunity to introduce Ashley Evans, Director of Finance for Marin Humane. Along with her day-to-day -day responsibilities, Ashley helped Marin Humane navigate through all of the HR and financial impacts from COVID-19, from handling the PPP loan process to supporting HR with staff during the shutdown. Thanks to her stewardship, in leadership, Marin Humane was able to keep staff working and limit the number of employees facing reduced hours. Under her financial oversight, Ashley enabled Marin Humane to monitor cash flows and create various projection scenarios during a time of so much uncertainty. She also oversaw the Finance Committee's RFP process for an investment manager, audit and tax prep, as well as fiduciary advisors for their employee retirement plan, all of which ended with positive results for the organization. When faced with an issue, be it large or small, Ashley has an uncanny ability to be laser focused on the issue, identify the steps needed to find a solution, and then arrive at that solution. She has been instrumental in the updated strategic plan as supported ongoing efforts to look for new ways to use technology. Ashley lives with her husband and their two energetic dogs, Lucy and Miley in Nevada. They enjoy the beach, hiking local trails, modern and contemporary art, as well as spending time with their large family. With that, it is my great pleasure to present this award to Ashley Evans. I'm Ashley Evans from Marin Humane, and I'm honored to be the recipient of this award. I'd like to thank my colleagues who nominated me. Over the last 18 months dealing with the pandemic, I learned that we all have to be willing to change. A lot of people find change hard, but it's a necessity to do the best that we can do. COVID-19 shut down a lot of operations, but as an essential service, we stayed open. We had to change the way a lot of our operations ran and we found new ways to do things. As we were opening up, we actually took a look at everything we had done and determined which changes were the, for the better. So I think it's very important to keep doing that and always look at what we're doing and see if there's a better way. Hi, I am Chris Thompson. I manage the newly opened Napa office that is downtown on Main Street. Comerica Bank is super excited to have the new office to help support the community. This award goes to Ken Jensen, Sonoma Valley Hospital. Ken has served as Sonoma Valley Hospital's Chief Financial Officer since 2015 and has provided strong financial and operational leadership during that time. Ken has been instrumental in ensuring the hospital's financial sustainability during turbulent times in healthcare, especially for a small community hospital like SVH, and has developed timely and often creative financial approaches to support the hospital's stability and growth. 
Significant achievements during his tenure are he improved reimbursement agreements with some of the hospital's government payers to improve revenues and engineered a dramatic reduction in the hospital's loan lease portfolio, thereby reducing expenses. Also faced with possible closings of three service lines because of declining revenues, he helped to maintain two services in the community by transferring those operations to other providers. He even stepped in as interim CEO during the early months of 2021 during a transition in leadership. Advice Ken would give to a young emerging financial leader would be to trust who works with you and allow reasonable mistakes. Trust goes both ways. Also know that you have the opportunity to make mistakes as well and learn from them. That's great advice, Ken, and congratulations. So Ken, how did these changes change you? I changed uh, to, the, to the extent uh, I became more flexible, more understanding uh, of the situation. Uh, Sonoma Valley Hospital had to deal with the COVID situation as with other hospitals. Uh, in the middle of the COVID situation, we also had a cyber attack, which pretty much shut down all of our IT systems for a three month period. The flexibility allowed me to work better with people in terms of uh, making decisions uh, and also trying to make the right decision during the whole process. The next award goes to Kelly Noonan, Willow Creek Wealth Management. Kelly has worked for Willow Creek Wealth Management in Sebastopol since 1993, where she has been an integral part of the firm's growth, operational efficiencies, and leadership team, enabling the organization to now manage over $1.3 billion in client assets for over 800 families in the North Bay and across the country. Kelly has overseen the growth of the back office operations team from a single person to its current capacity of 16 members, expanding to have centralized trading, client servicing, and IT resources on staff. During that time, the team has grown to 18 individuals in total. Today, Kelly serves as the COO and the CFO and is a managing partner where she provides financial oversight, business analytics, thought leadership, strategic development, and industry participation on behalf of Willow Creek. The toughest business decision she has made recently is regarding the acquisition of another investment firm and expanding their client base into other areas of the North Bay. They ultimately decided to pursue the opportunity, but the decision came with a lot of honest reflection and analysis of their strategic goals and objectives. Kelly is known to always be the first out of the gate with creative ideas and enthusiasm and for showing appreciation for the hard work that everyone puts in day in and day out, and also for recognizing important achievements in exciting ways. Over the years, she has been featured speaker at many industry events and has been interviewed for several publications. However, she considers her greatest achievement to be the extraordinary team and company culture that they have built. Congratulations, Kelly. How will the pandemic change life as I know it? COVID-19 has left a path of human devastation in its wake that will likely change countless things, including the way people do business. The pandemic prompted many of us to rethink our lives, careers, and ask ourselves what really matters. I have a sense that COVID-19 only accelerated practices already in motion in the financial advice industry. Flex time work schedules and virtual meetings had been trending for the past decade, and the pandemic was able to change more in one year than the past 10. In so many ways, the future really is here, and it's up to us to embrace the changes and continue to innovate effective and valuable ways to serve our clients. Well, congratulations and a virtual round of applause to all of this year's Journal CFO Award winners. I know I speak for all of the presenters and myself when I say it's been a pleasure to acknowledge all of your hard work, accomplishments and achievements in this interesting year. And thank you again to our founding underwriter, Comerica. We would also like to invite you to the next upcoming Business Journal virtual event, Diversity, Equity and Inclusion, a virtual conference on September 9th. You can register right now on the Business Journal's website for that important event. 
keep an eye out too for the CFO that you've met today. Their official profiles in a future issue of the North Bay Business Journal and on our website. We thank you all for being here today and for supporting this year's winners. Have a productive rest of your day.